we were looked as like the Ajebo version of King's College. Not Greg's. King's College. So is King's College the opposite of Ajebo? Um, No. So King's <laughs> College back then, they were like the boutique kids, like all the rich kids in society, the colonial people send their kids there too as well. So it was like a prestigious thing. Okay. Um, You know, obviously Nigeria, maintenance culture, I don't know how um how well they maintained you know the school going forward but i guess other i guess better can i let me not say better facilities you know okay. with other schools sprung up you but know when, when you're I trying was, to censor what you're saying yeah, so that nobody come they, and say that one class is I beg, cool the start, I beg, go, the game, ahead, the game, go ahead don't worry know? no judgment so um yeah so that was pretty much it um so for us people tried to pick on us uh because we're like oh the body kids you know back then we're like you know nah we're not we're actually where it is so we had the grangers of course on the mainland they were on the mainland but grange we all know that they're paying in they're pa- paying pounds. pounds or school fees <laughs> or they have an oimbo um principal so you definitely know that okay they're the Botti kids then you have the bis kids what is bis uh, british international mm-hmm. school so oh, wow. david o david o bobo and like a lot of them bobo Gusti. Bobo, uh, Prince, the lawyer. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, Prince, the lawyer. His um, lawyer. Yeah, his lawyer. Um, we're all in BIS as well. So that was like a different... They were like... They were proper body. They, were like, they didn't even have any mixture of like, oh, some Paco blood in them. Also, we had like people from humble backgrounds and rich kids. <laughs> Imagine you being taught by white people at six years old and you still in the same country 20 years later, still struggling with the rest of us. Yeah, and... In five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> it was good. Was popping. It's your girl Jess, Jess Finesse, and we're on another episode of Jess Finesse Presents. And if you've been hearing the voice of the young man to my, he is to my, he to my left. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the one, the only. I worked with him on many times, so I feel comfortable enough to smoke with him today. Gigi. Tosan. <laughs> you want to go by Wills? You want to go by Mac? How are you feeling today? Tosan Wills. Tosan Wills. Let's know. do it. Tosan Stage Wills. names only. Mm-hmm. Um, Tosan, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on the show. You know, I'm excited to yarn just many, 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 many things. When's the last time you held a mic? Um, Two days ago. What were you doing? Uh, I was hosting, I was hosting at night. Yeah, at a club. Yeah. You know what's so funny? I I have not hosted in well over a year. Okay. And my eyes have definitely shined from like this hosting game. Like they're the ones that are, you know, many are called if you're chosen. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I was called and now they ain't choose me no more, <laughs> but you are chosen. All right. Cause till oh, now, man. since since I moved to this country in 2017 and I hosted my first event um it uh at Native Land 2017, till now you're still consistently hosting. Yeah. And I know there is a small crop of y'all. That are the hype mans and the mm-hmm. MCs and the and the and the and the guys that hold down the events with the with the hype and all that stuff. And you're one of the few of them, so I commend you because you. that that stuff is not that stuff is hard. Thank you. It's hard Thank as heck. <laughs> um, but we're gonna chill today. We're gonna just some topics, and you're gonna smoke with me now. Okay. My okay. premise of why I smoke Gary with my guests is because smoking Gary is a very communal thing to me, right? Mm. You can't just smoke with anybody, mm. all right? The same mm. way that they roll up and they be like, oh, pass the bump, pass the bump. I can't pass, I can't pass the Gary to just anybody. Mm. Like, who's going to do that? Mm. I'm not going to steal with random strangers and be smoking Gary. Mm. I got to steal with people that, that have played an integral role in my life. And I feel like you definitely have because I've worked with you, right? We've mm. co-hosted um, major events since I moved back. Yeah. So before we get into it, White or yellow? <clears throat> White Gary, please. White Gary. I'm waiting for the day that somebody will come on this podcast mm. and they will join me in what Jess. the glory. Jess is trying of to force this, this yellow Gary I'm not on everybody anything. because she's from the East. I'm not Gary's actually six. Not Gary. Not Gary. The key. The key. The key. Can you tell? Uh, my lovely audience, the lovely audience, what it is that you do. Let me let you have a few minutes to introduce yourself mm-hmm. as we prepare our lovely meal. Okay. Um, let me let me hold on while I... So, um, I'm a lawyer by profession. Um, I'm an entertainment executive. Like That's my job role. But I also... I'm an MC, live show host, presenter. So that's, I guess that's how I like to describe myself. Um, I've acted in two things, so I don't know if I can call myself an actor. Okay, so gig, gig, gig. I have interest in acting. Um, 
A and R. It's it's a whole lot. Like so, so I don't, which one of them things make you money? That's the one I want to know. Okay, which one makes me money? Um, MC MC makes me money, good okay, money. Okay, okay. And um, yeah, I guess being an entertainment executive too. When is the last time you wore that ugly white wig they make y'all wear? Eeeh, white wig. I haven't worn a wig in like two years because I stopped. I stopped practicing because I was actually practicing law for about four years. You know, seriously. Before I was like, you know what, now. Nah. Um, I think for me, I just always had the imposter syndrome. I wasn't sure. Uh, as a lawyer, I knew that I was in the entertainment game. So while I was a lawyer, it was almost as if, oh, you're not a pure breed lawyer. You're one of them. You're still a Rockies guy. What do you normally put in your Gary? Um, I <clears throat> I usually don't add the milk. Um, this is like a first time for me. Not first time, but um, yeah, it's not a norm. So I usually do sugar and mm, ice cubes. Okay, we have ice cubes there. And bits of, I'll sprinkle gege. Yeah. What does gege mean? I know it's an expression, but it's, like, when, when is the accurate time I, to use I, it? I, 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 I really don't know. Myself it's, it's actually very addictive. You know, it's, um, I, I, I literally use it for everything. It's like, I'm surprised, gege. I'm happy, gege. I'm sad, gege. And yeah. let me, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that's from uh, Meru Kunabi. Is it Mayo? I, I heard, is, it Mayo, 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 Mayo. is it Mayo or Isn't David? Isn't he the one that popularized it? No, I think Mayo started. Mayo, yeah. Yeah, Mayo started. Hmm, yeah, be careful started. before they go and copyright it. Yeah, Mayo, Mayo, Mayo <laughs> David, Rugwe, all of them. It's all yeah, pack poison. So, so. Okay, Um. without further ado, Tosan, you want to do me the honors? As you pour your granuts, mm. can you lift up the first fan and tell us what we're discussing today? I should put it. I should go to do it. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Our first topic, um DMX dies at age 50, RIP DMX. Um 5 days after su- uh, suffering a heart attack. Tributes pouring in from fans and celebs alike. The family denies rumors about Jay-Z and Beyoncé buying the masters to his music. So I guess that's Okay, so um, those are like the yeah, sub the sub- points that we can hit yeah. on and then just a general conversation. Um yeah. So, like you said, rest in peace, DMX. R.I.P. You know, yeah. I'm going to let you start. You know why? Because the thing I want to say about this DMX thing yeah. is very left of center. It has mm. it has nothing to do with the topics thing. I Please forgive me, our amazing <laughs> producer. Yeah. Uh, don't vex. But just give your initial thoughts and then I'll, I'll drop my two cents. Um, of course, it's uh, DMX passing is very sad. Uh, legend in the game. One of my earliest memories of hip hop is... You know, rough riders. I know. I literally, I'm sure most of us had that fake chain back in the day. The R, that R chain that used to spin. Well, let me share. Before G Unit, they started doing it. So, but yeah, DMX, legendary stuff. The music was, the music was so dope. I actually went back. I never listened to, um, to a DMX album. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Um, like growing up, I just knew the songs and I knew like okay, the feature, what he was, what it was about, you know. So I actually went back and I was like, okay, damn, DMX was actually quite deep, you know. Um, and I know the latter stages towards his passing, he was very positive on like social media in terms of the messages that he kept on trying to pass to people, you know, God. Like God is real, blah blah blah. Right. So it's um I think we should just take a page from his from his um his passing and learn from it. You know, I'm sure a lot of people would have some other, I guess uh, pro- let me not say but like negative things to say about I guess the way he lived his life. Um but um I just for me I like to I like to just take the good things out of people's uh, lives and emulate that really. Right, so, right. Yeah. Um. So for for starters, I'm going to say shout out social media, and I don't normally shout out social media because I don't like social media anymore. Um, and what and what it stands for and what it does for the most part. There's more to me. There's more negatives of social media than positives. Uh, but in DMX's case, it was a huge positive because it gave us the power to um narrate and paint the picture of DMX that we wanted to paint. Right, because mm. back in the day. What would yeah. happen is if somebody dies and they say it's an overdose, yeah. you don't have like 
that's a story that is cemented in 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 our in our minds, no right? The news will come and say the person had the person OD'd. He was a gangster rapper. He was black. He was this. He was that. Just straight up negative things. But because of social media and people, everyone just having access to their phones, both the people that knew him in real life, the people that had positive interaction with him, everybody could pour their own version of DMX on social media, media. so we could all see all the positives that DMX has done. If you will leave white media and and um, and and um, Oibo news Oibo. Mm-hmm. is that is the black person that OD'd full stop. Let me lift up the next fan. Mm-hmm. Bet that. Bet that. Bet that. Okay, this so, song. So, <laughs> Picky Vest and Udu X present Pop Rev, a platform mm. that lets music fans invest in artists. Mm. And a notable thing is that Davido has signed this new venture. Mm. Wow. Hmm. So do you have the do you have the context of it for the Um, most part? Yeah, for the most part, yeah. But like, um, I'm just thinking about it now. Like, (laughs) me, personally, 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 with you know artists and like um, investing in them, it's a cold. It's a very cold. It's a cold P because I guess with this, there's more structure to it. So I guess there'll be there'll be written there'll be contracts people will sign stuff. But I beg, who contracts really help? How many people actually, um, you know, enforce all these contracts? Actually, go through with them. Um, the thing is that okay, you invest in someone, and they I guess they they blow. Hmm? Do you? What if they don't pay you back? So I think. So there's there's press releases on this, right? Yeah. And I mean, I was skimming through one of them before this podcast. Mm-hmm. And do you, are you do you use Piggy Vest? Um, no, I no. I okay, don't. I don't. So I use Piggy Vest. Yeah. Piggy Vest did not sponsor me to say this. Piggy mm-hmm. Vest is the best thing that has ever happened to me since I moved to this country. Mm-hmm. Um, God forbid I save my money in a bank ever again. Um, but wow. there's a section yeah. of Piggy Vest. Piggy Vest is is known for saving, right? Yeah. Um, and then saving and actually gaining interest on mm-hmm. the money that you save. So mm-hmm. there's incentive to actually save as opposed to if you put your money in a traditional bank mm-hmm. and every minute they're taking debit, they're taking debit, 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 me. debit, debit. <laughs> Even when you don't use a car for one year, there's debit card maintenance fee. So pick, there's another sector of piggy vest is investing, mm-hmm. right? So on the app, I've never done it, but like there's like different types of things you can invest in. Yeah. And it's pretty straightforward. So they'll say, um, they'll tell you what it is you can invest in. They'll tell you how much it is per share or something. They'll tell you how much interest you'll get. And then they'll tell you once the maturation period occurs, Mm -hmm. it releases the money to you. So Mm -hmm. I think that is the same thing they're going to do with artists, right? And where you, where you would receive revenue is from their streams. So let's say I'm an indie artist. Mm -hmm. Um, I have music. I put it on the Udu X platform. Mm -hmm. And then I guess if people like it, I guess it's, it's almost the same, like a, not a GoFundMe, but like Indiegogo, where you can put out a, a, an invention that you're working on and then people can crowdfund. So maybe they put their song on the platform. People like the song. Mm-hmm. They like the artist. They can, you know, put shares. It's like you're buying shares in the sure. music. Okay. So there would be, from my understanding, there would be a clear-cut way mm-hmm. to be able to get your money back. It's not like, oh, you have to sign a contract with the artist mm-hmm. and then the artist can run away and mm-hmm. now you don't have a lawyer to come out. You don't, you mm-hmm. can't go to court to go and do this thing. I think it's, it looks pretty clear cut okay. from what I saw. The next fan. Okay. That was good. I like that. I like this fan. This fan is like a ninja, ninja fan. <laughs> hey, hold on. Wow. This is the first time I've seen somebody switch <laughs> fan. Though. Wait, what happened? Why did you switch? Hola, hola, hola. <laughs> There's a method to his madness. Yeah. I believe in Tosan. I trust him. Okay. <clears throat> Oh yeah, so the next topic. Twitter set up first African HQ in Ghana. Mm. Um yeah, do, should I read? No, the, don't worry, don't uh, worry, we yeah, can we can do that. Okay. Chale. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Aquaba. Aquaba, Chale. That's, yeah. that's, that's the one. I'm practicing my my yeah. my tree, so <laughs> when it's time for me to my, it's okay. To Bro. <laughs> I think it's time for me to leave. You're the JP, you're the Japa. Uh, okay. I don't. I don't want to. Like I said, people will be thinking because we have to? two passports. You I, said what? You don't want to to jackpot. <laughs> Not the way that the people that really need it. Like, let's say there was a boat, right, that needed to save people, and they mm. only had twenty seats. Mm. 
in turn, and like the the problem that they're running with, you know how like a boat is sinking. Mm. So the sinking ship is Nigeria, right? <laughs> I'll give the seats to other people before I will, I will enter the next boat. Okay. I don't know if that if that makes Why? sense. Why? Because you can't survive. I can survive, but that's not even fair to say because it doesn't matter how much money or status or condi- like a uh, a protection you have in this country, you can still yeah. die. It doesn't yeah, matter. Gotta. Like it does not matter. Mm, I it. think it's just it's a mental it's a mental thing that okay. we should probably discuss off the pod. Okay. My thing is, I don't see why this is... I don't see why anybody would think that somebody would come and set up shop. Yeah. Why Twitter would come and set up shop in a country where there was a politician that threatened to sue this guy, to sue Jack, because mm. of Twitter's involvement during the NSARS campaign. Yeah. Why would anybody now think that Jack would just with open and loving arms, despite the fact that he loves our people, despite the fact that he verified our president, FK, and some few other people during NSARS, <laughs> would now want to come and set up shop in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, ah, man, first of all, we don't even have, ah, need not, like, electricity. Sorry. <laughs> like, there's light in Ghana or Charlie. Like, they don't, I don't think, you know, the office, first of all, the Twitter office will be there for like a few days without electricity. Things just work better, you know, in Ghana. I'm not, I'm not mad. Like, I'm, I'm honestly not mad. I'm all, I'm all about the whole, yeah, we are Africa. I'm trying to be, um, what's this thing? Not a neo, what's this? Um, Pan-African? Pan-Africanism. Okay. I'm trying to well, practice. Africa. Mm-hmm. Like we're one Africa. Yeah, like one Africa, especially like West Africa. I'm just, you know, I try to carry farms the whole piece. It's convenient <laughs> for me to farm the piece now. Because I know before, I used to yap, I was like, oh, Ghana, like, why do they talk like that? <laughs> and because time is of the essence, toast on next fan. Oh, oh wow. That was smooth. I said, I said we work together. What you mean? How, how are we going to host? How are we going to host? Should we, there was a time we hosted Giddy Fest. Yeah, we, oh, yeah, oh my God. It was supposed to be Spanky yo. and then something happened. I don't know. Spanky's that we was now, leg, yeah. Shout out Spanky. Spanky. Fest. Oh my days. I went the one year that I hosted. It was, it was interesting. That's when I knew that I do not want to host mainstream events ever again. <laughs> I don't have the range. That, this guy here has the range. I don't do have the range. Do you know that day? Can I give you a quick give us before? Juice. Give so us that juice. day, I hosted the the, the small new gen yeah, the new gen yeah. stage, and um, I was like, man, I really want to be on the big stage. Like I've done this. I did it last year. Mm-hmm. You know, like come on, let me graduate. And I was just by the stage, the big stage, and Spanky. Literally, was just he was dancing. I don't know if that one is act of God or twisted or, his ankle. Yeah, that was crazy. And I was just like, "Can I swear? Come on, this one is the swear. Come on." I was like, "Yay, Bombo, Cla- this guy, like, are you okay?" But can I? Can I, can I feel it? <laughs> well, that's that. Yeah, that's well, the, show, the show must go on at the end of this. So I was just watching. I was like, then he just told me, "Man, bro." My uncle is is gone. I was like, don't worry, I got you. And that was my... Ginger. Do you feel like that event was pivotal to your hosting career now? Um, Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 it was. Because it was... I think that was the first time... No. Whiskey. So Whiskey performed that Mm -hmm. that day. So 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 much. Sorry. Thank you. Um, Whiskey performed that day. So, uh, yeah, it, it was definitely a big one. But I, it was Giddy Fest, you know. Mm-hmm. The lineup was quite big. Um, um, yeah, it was a big one for me. And the, right. the crowd, the audience, it was... I, I remember the picture I have from from that day. Mm-hmm. And I just look back and I'm like, wow, you, you were yearning, you were vibing with these people. With this. And I was like, okay, you're good. That's when I knew that. I was like, okay. Unlike yeah, oh, like me. Like, I was there thinking, oh, I did Native Land. Mm. What? What more is nah. Giddy Fest? Never again. Your style is Never different. Never again. It's ve- see, many are call fewer chosen, and there's actually a difference between an MC, a host, and a hype man. I'm not a hype man. I, that's what I learned that day. That I'm not Fair. a hype man. I'm not. I can't yell. Fair. I need to be able to talk. Yeah. You know, be able to you know talk swaggy with the audience. Yeah. You know, vibe with the person that's coming on stage. Mm-hmm. Announce them. Let mm-hmm. them perform. Transition to the next person. I can't yeah. be yelling like uh, the Spankies and the Tosan. Do you know the thing? <laughs> the thing is that the Nigerian, like, you have to, it depends on your crowd, I guess. So the crowd, Nigeria, the proper, like, had like Niger crowd, mm-hmm. is, they're not patient. So uh, that opportunity for you to yarn is very, is very limited. 
They just want you, you to be shouting and, 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 and angry. It's not even, angry. I mean, apart from even the shouting, it's not even, it's just like, you have yeah, to have the, my, you know, the number, 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 you have to have the, like, like, no, to, I can't be doing that. Like, I cannot so be doing that. No, the number, because no. the streets, there's a I certain I can't even bet that you want me to be doing my <laughs> me now. No, I can't. Do you know that if you best said, and, or if you even said my I mean, and even, and it sounded weird, mm-hmm. like, they would love it. Honestly, it's a thing that like you are. It's a thing of oh, you're you are almost you are making you are trying. Do you know that there are some events? I, I I haven't been to. There are some Nigerian universities that like if you go there and you are performing, even as a big artist, you have to go. You have to heal them first. You have to prostrate and greet them. I think it's. I don't remember what university it was, but if you don't do that or be at that, like they didn't burn you well. They right. will stone you. Like learned. so, it's a thing that you have to. You have, Nigerians like we like humility. Do you understand? We like this. <laughs> we want to f- just even if even if I know that ah, Jay Z they rap past me die. I want Jay Z to just uh, I'm a bro. You did that's okay. so bad. Yeah, I'm so, so oh, anyway. it's a mentality thing. Like you just need to under ah my dear. So like, you have to understand your your see many are called meat. only few. <laughs> Still host. I feel still, my dear. Let's move on to the next fan. Let's go. Oh yeah, celebrities replying negative comments and ignoring positive comments. Since mm. that fan is still in the in the pile, <laughs> uh, you can give us the context. Okay, so basically, um, have you ever, like a story that comes to mind is David O. Okay. So this guy. Um, Messages like DMs Davido and he's yeah. like insulting him like a bastard and all these things. Mm. And Davido replies him too, insulting him. Mm. Then the guy goes, I'm actually like your biggest fan. I just wanted to get your attention. Oh, wow. Okay. And it worked. <laughs> like if you go on Insta blog, yeah. most of the um, um, celebrities replying to their fans yeah. is insults, mm. is negative comments. Mm. If I say, oh, you're so nice, you're so good, yeah. they will not reply. What if mm. I say you're a bastard, mm. you're a fucking cunt? Mm. They will reply. Mm. Why? Why? Is it like they get... You want to go first or should I go first? Please, yeah, yeah, the celeb, go first. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> okay. So I think it's this assumption, which is very wild for you to assume this, is that like everybody should just love you because mm. you're blown. Yeah. So anyone that doesn't love you, they're crazy. Mm. How, how dare you not come and worship the ground that I walk on? How dare you not love me? Mm. Right? Because, you know, so, and it, it, it may not just be like a celebrity thing. It could just be a human thing. But maybe it's heightened when you're a celebrity and yeah. you have like millions of followers and you get hundreds and thousands of likes on posts. The one negative one will stick out more than the love that you're seeing. Yeah. Right? I think it's just this assumption that is like, how dare you think you can come and, and put something on my own page. page or come and be putting something on my, on my own platform? Mm-hmm. I think that's where I would like to start the conversation because in my mind, it's like, but as a human being, you know that not everyone will love you. I have a lot of boundaries, but I have a problem enforcing them and it really busts my head. It really... Okay, bu- were, they, were they critiquing you? That um, you have a lot of boundaries, but you yeah, have... Okay, okay. But I, yeah, but I have, you know, because I had it... God, okay, I'm opening up now. How so many, I had oh, f- hold on. This is important. How many yeah. minutes do we have? Hmm... It better be more than five. Yeah, I'll, don't worry, I'll no, give you. No, I'll, I'll, I'll give you two, two minutes. Just do one more fan. Okay, yeah. open up, open up. The I'll floor do, is yours. I'll do two minutes real quick. Come on. So like, um, my birthday, I have a very good friend. Um, um, we were like one day apart from each other. Um, birthday wise, we know each other since like just two and stuff. And um, you know, the friendship is you know amazing friendship. You know, but there are obviously there are things that. I don't like, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, you do. And I just have probably won't have communicated because the way I am mm-hmm. is that, like, I'm just like, okay, I can solve this problem. I'll, I can fix it eventually. Right. I won't bring it up now right. because I don't want to make my friend feel that, like, mm-mm. you know, so for over the years, it's, you know, and I'm sure I have kinks about me too. Of that, course, of course. I, anyway, so... <laughs> Something happened a few days ago and uh, we fought. We had like a falling out over it. And I felt that you were taking advantage of, the person was taking advantage of my my um, friendship, my nature, my kind-hearted nature. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know me, uh, like I drive here, so I don't mind 
if you don't, if you can't get, find a way home, and I and I know, and I'm there, I would probably help, mm -hmm. you know. But when it becomes a thing that, like, you know, it's almost all the time. You're not even trying to trying to help yourself. After okay. I've, you know, I just feel that like you're taking the piss, you know, taking advantage of me, and we we literally racked like a few days ago on the person's birthday. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. So it was a me it was very messy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry, it was very messy. And I was just, for um, that just got me to thinking, because I spoke to one of my other friends about it, that like, okay, what is it with, I'm very introspective. So I'll go back sorry, and I'll be God. like, you. yo, I'm like, yo, what, what have I done? What could I have done better? Differently, yep. You know, and the person just yelled me like, look, you know, me and you fought as well. But what I've noticed about you is that, like, I'm very particular. I like things, you know, but you don't enforce them. You don't communicate to your friends, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. So I guess for, the moral of all of this now is that you have to, I have, I've learned to be more intentional, mm -hmm. more um, vocal. expressive, vocal. Yeah. Right. You know, even though it might come across as, oh, you are complaining too much. Even I, I don't like that. You know, I don't like the idea of people thinking that, oh, I'm just whining, oh, this is getting to me or this. But it's better than, you know, getting than the exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that is just the lumber. I don't like, it has to be the intangible things right. are more important for me. Right. Once I see that it's just a tangible um, thingy thingy, I run away. Yeah. Okay, so I know I, you're going to say we have to skip, we have to move on. I just wanted to say that Tosan, like... We what you just did right now yeah. is literally why I started this podcast. <laughs> the fact that you just opened up about something like that. I think for me, I got very tired of like just having surface level conversations with people, yeah. especially in the industry where we all have to put up fake heads, where you all have to like make it look like we're always okay outside. Meanwhile, yeah. our houses are burning down. Our yeah. lives are crumbling. And I was like, I want a space where I can talk with people that like, I mean, if I had my way, I'll just bring people that I know. Yeah. But obviously it's going to get to a point where, you know, God willingly, like this podcast will grow. And then I have to start relating with and, and talking to people I've never met before. I don't have a relationship with. And this thing you just did right now is literally the type of conversation I want to have. <laughs> like, Tos like Tosan, your, your persona is you are, you know, the lovable guy, the guy yeah. that always gets the party started. You know the right things to say. You are goofy. You're, you're, you're a comedian. You know yeah. how to make people feel good. Yeah. Who will think, not that, you know, as human beings, you don't just assume, like, we all have problems, but, like, for you to sit here and be like, despite these layers of myself that I show mm -hmm. the world, I have everyday problems, too. I have, yeah. you know, issues with my relationships as well and things of that mm -hmm. nature. So I think that's really sick that you opened up. So I appreciate you because I feel like I've unlocked what I needed this podcast <laughs> to be. So shout out to you. Yeah, um, I got you. That thing is so deep. I wish we could talk about it more because yeah. I can talk about that thing for hours. For hours but um, Io yeah. says we have to move on. So Liddy cuts off her engagement immediately because the boyfriend proposed with a 10,000 Naira ring. Mm. Mm. This marriage thing. <laughs> let me tell you. This whole marriage thing. Let me tell you. So... I'm going to I'm going to be very honest and open. Come on, that's what we need so, for. This thing, this the marriage game. Hey. <laughs> I, <laughs> I like the marriage game. Like. It's because uh, at the end of that's what me I'm. It's revealing itself to be now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> it, the, for my own understanding, most times the I don't think I know a man wants to marry a woman, mm -hmm. but the pressure the was tired now the woman will apply the pressure if the man is wasting time you know they are, they'll be dropping signals like okay my friends you know like you know it's it's mainly from if you leave the guy the guy can be coasting till you are 40 and you know my thing is that you are fighting you are fighting for this ring at the end of the day a lot of women are fighting for the ring the, let's, can we, is that true? Or, it's very, to me, it's very yeah, false. Yeah, but yeah, I know I don't, I don't, I don't represent ah, the population. A lot of women are fighting for like, the ring, my dear. The my man, ring finger is already occupied. What am I? What am I fighting for? The man finally what give I, I've you. Married myself. The okay. man finally make you an honest woman. Mm? <laughs> you don't know the plan that okay, maybe he doesn't have bad uh, that when he gets bad, he upgrade, upgrade the ring. You. You Why know? do you not know if you're if you're if the person that you're on track that to marry has money or not? So not exactly about money. So, <laughs> like if I have money and I buy you 10k ring, you collect it because I don't want to spend 
stupid money on why me should because I, you the see the energy in which you said that you collect it why the love. is it the no, same I'm, way I'm, that you're using to ch- you're choosing uh, to buy a 10k I ring the same make. way that a woman can choose not to accept the 10k ring Gig. gotta stop the way you coming with it know that i've been on time i do my own i get it done i do whatever it feels that i like 